I've reviewed two other microphones by the Fine Fine brand in the past, so and so it was a cool opportunity to be offered the chance to review a third provided by Fine Fine themselves. Anytime I can continuously cover a company's products like that, where every time they come out with a new product, you know, they offer one to me for a review or I'm able to get my hands on it another way, it's kind of cool because it allows you to see to sort of chart the progress, uh, to be able to see if they're taking fans' wants and desires, feedback into account, to note the changes that's happening with every successive model. And this has been kind of cool to do that with these microphones. In a few cases, I've been able to do that with some flashlights and some other gadgets, and it was exciting, even for a small channel, to be offered those opportunities. Similar to the way the 683 mic that I reviewed previously had brought some design features standard to much more expensive mics in an affordable package such as tripod legs, front gain controls, surprisingly solid sound, the A6T, in this case, seems to be aimed at that same crowd. With the included desk-mounted boom arm, it's highly positionable and ideal for a permanent setup. When you're done with the mic, you can simply swivel it to the side, still attached to the desk and ready for next time. Contrast that against a boom stand that I've used for years, where as convenient as it is for heavier mics, the tripod legs also seem to get in the way for chairs or even your own feet under the desk. For those who game regularly or in a lot of Zoom calls or even that are content creators, podcasts, YouTubers, etc., a desk-mounted boom stand makes a lot of sense. It's also a plus that the mic features USB-C as a connection type because if you ever need to swap the cable that comes with it, you probably have plenty of those on hand. And I can tell you with other mics that I've tried, a lot of them are still using very outdated micro USB, sometimes even mini USB, uh, which is several generations ago connectors. And so that can get a little weird if you're hunting for cables. Aside the boom arm, another feature the A6T offers is a suspension ring on the mount, something you often see on pricier condenser mics to reduce vibration from the desk or however it's mounted. The mic itself is a no-frills design. The back side has a USB-C port for a connection, like I said, and the front side features an included pop screen and gain control. Some mics feature a 3.5mm monitoring port for pro applications, but really, for what this mic seems designed to do, the straightforward design is easy to use and very functional. And if I'm honest, I've had several mics that had the 3.5mm monitoring port, and I've only used it probably a couple of times in all the years I've been playing with mics. The RGB lights on the mic seemed targeted at gamers, since gaming gear like keyboards and even PC cases often have similar lighting effects. Personally, I could take or leave it, and for Zoom calls, I'd probably prefer not to have any lights at all for a more low-key and professional look. Sound quality-wise, I think the A6T is a good value at its price point, and as for how it handles voices, well, you've been listening to it for this whole video. Anytime I review a mic, I like to use it in its own review. And in this case, the pop screen allows for ver fairly close positioning for a pleasing vocal reproduction without a lot of peaks. For recording sound effects and other things, it does lack a little of the crispness more expensive mics such as the Blue Yeti X have, but that's I guess to be expected on a mic that's more than three times the price. I recorded a couple sound effects just from my own curiosity, hitting them real close to this mic here, and it did a decent job. Um, that is where that crispness and the fineness of the detail um, can come into play a little bit or not, and I realize that's not really the use case of this mic, but I just wanted to play with it. And in this case, of course, as a desk-mounted mic, the main thing that it needs to do well is handle voices crisply and clearly, and I feel that it does that fairly well. Much as I experienced with the 683A compared to the Yeti X, the Yeti puts a little bit more depth and body into my voice when I listen to recordings, which is nice. Not that I have a particularly deep voice, but I do notice somewhat more bass timbre to it when I record with the Yeti. To some degree, this can be easily adjusted in post with some EQ on the Fine Fine, and it's acceptable as a trade-off for anyone considering how much mic you get for the money at this $50 price point. Especially for someone just getting started, whether for business, content creation, or setting up a serious gaming rig, being able to get a capable mic using modern cables that even comes with a boom arm is a great buy, and because it's USB, you don't need any mixers or other gear to make the mic work. So to wrap up, this is a lightweight, all plastic designed mic, still feels relatively solid, although it's not as heavy 
as both the 683 that I had reviewed before or, of course, mics like the Yeti mic. Um, that's sort of a mixed bag. The heaviness does give it sort of a premium feeling, but it is a little harder to keep on a stand or to lug around if you're throwing this in a bag. I like that this mic is easy to use. Much like the previous Fine Fine mics that I've tried, and even is true of the Yeti X, you don't need any drivers or any software or anything like that. So you just plug the USB-C straight into your computer, instantly it sees it, and it knows how to use it. There's no frill, there's no setup, it makes it easy to switch it between different computers and not have to remember anything. Really, I feel like the person who benefits most from a mic like this is either a gamer or a content creator who might be on a budget and is just trying to get started and is looking for values. Uh, a lot of times on Amazon you can see combo packs, whether you're buying a digital camera and it might be a pack that comes with a whole bunch of stands and lens cleaners and things or whatever. And in this case, it's nice to see a mic that comes with a lot of the things that you would need to get started all in one and at the $50 range price point. In this case, it can screw onto the side of your desk real easily. You can move it, you can swivel it, you can position it, you can adjust the height. Uh, like I said it before, when you're done with it, you can just sweep it right out of the way. That's a nice feature. Um, it does squeak a little bit, which I probably could just lubricate that and alleviate the sound. Um, I don't have any glaring nitpicks or gripes about this mic personally, other than for me, uh, the light up RGB colors, I would personally probably rather do without that. But I don't see any major like shortcomings of this mic. I mean, I think it has all of the basic things that you would want for a mic that you're going to do these types of things with it. And the little gain control on the bottom here that you can adjust back and forth on the fly. It's a nice position. It's kind of understated. It doesn't stick out or be real obvious, but it's easy to use. And I think on the whole, this is another product from Fine Fine that knows who it's targeting and it's a good value for the money. I definitely like the boom arm more than using a mic stand. That's probably going to be something that sticks with my setup going forward, to be honest. Um, for me, once I used the table mount boom, there was no going back to a traditional stand when I'm sitting at a desk. It's just a much nicer setup. If this video is helpful to you, please leave a like, consider subscribing. I do product reviews and discussions on various things related to tech on an ongoing basis. And if you have a question of that, something that I didn't cover in this video, throw that in the comments too. I will do my best uh, to review all of them and get back to you. Catch you guys in the next video.